Hello everyone, this is Ben with ERP Connect Consulting and in this video we're going to go over part two of our multi-part series for our project management extension. Now, if you haven't checked out video one already, I would highly suggest looking at that as kind of a prerequisite to this session. Uh, that first video focused on the overview of structures of our projects, the project management setup, creating projects, how the dimensions are linked to projects to make it easier to use than the jobs module. Uh, the scheduling and billing options that we have, and putting some time on a project as well as our email task reminders and emails to teams. So with that, go check out video one if you haven't already. Otherwise, video two, you are in the right spot. Some of the things we're going to review today for part two are going to be hyper-focused on our sales documents and purchasing documents. So what are we going to go over with that? Number one, we're going to go over linking sales documents and purchasing documents by utilizing that project dimension uh, in order for it all to flow through back into the project to do reporting and financials and also tracking kind of the timeline of the project. We're also going to show how to create invoices from time entries and go over the bill rate options as well as the invoice formatting options. And then finally, we're going to go over our item planner for items needed for the project. You can see uh, what's expected from outstanding POs and also send vendor follow-up emails to see where your stuff is at. And then finally going into our change order functionality uh, on our sales orders to see what's changed um, in order to do those change orders. So with that, we're gonna jump right into it by looking at our sales documents. So if I come into any project, again, just go out to your project list, click project, and then come up here and click sales docs. So what this is going to do is it is going to show every open document that you have currently linked to this project. You can see quotes, orders, uh, returns, credit memos, invoices, all that fun stuff down here. And of course, if you want to drill into any of this, you can just go ahead and click view document. <clears throat> what that's going to do is it's going to show you the document and show you the project code is linked. Now this is the main requirement to make sure that they show up here. Obviously you have to have the right customer, um, which is then gonna narrow down the project. And then with that, the project code here and down here on the shipping and billing tab will indicate to you that it is linked and it will allow that transaction to show up in that list that we just showed. So in addition to the project, you can also tag the, fat, uh, the phase and the task if you want those to, to show up at a more granular level. But from a very base perspective, Sales documents will show everything here that's unposted as long as you tag that project in the uh, in the header as well as in the line. So with that, we're going to jump back here and we're going to create a new sales document. So let's go create a sales order and just show you how simple it is. <clears throat> I'm just going to create a new one here. And this would be for um, kind of non-time related things right now. So the time will show in a second, but this is just to add kind of some miscellaneous uh, sales orders and purchase orders into the system. Now, pop-up note, this is from another tool we've got called Advanced Notifications. Would highly recommend checking that out if you have not already. Uh, back to project management. I'm just going to add a few of these in. There's another pop-up note from ANT. I'm going to do it in Dallas. I'm going to order one of them. And you'll notice that the project should not be tagged, which is correct there. You'd have to come down here. I would recommend doing it at the header. You'll notice that only one project showed up. I'm going to default it into the lines. It shows up there now. And then again, you could do the phase and the task if you wanted here. Um, and then all that is going to do basically is come in here and make sure that you can do it at a more granular level. So we'll do discovery and chart of accounts there. And with that now, you get that down at a very granular view. And if I come back into my project, just do a quick refresh we should see this on our list now. So boom, come down here, sales orders at 950 that we just did for that surface, surface eight, and then we've got all of our uh, project information tagged out here. So with that, we are going to jump into our next section, which is creating invoices from time entries. So let's go back into our project Let's add a few time entries to this project real quick. So when I'm on a project, um, if you haven't done this already, you can come into the actual task. That task is already 100% full, so let's do this one. I'm gonna take a quick look at the task. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm taking a look around and uh, I need to add some hours to this. So um, let's see what I've got here. Let me change my work date because I've already submitted it for this week. So let's do it out into the future. So I'm just gonna go testing for demo 
video part two. I'm gonna do 2.5 hours and make it billable. And then I'm actually gonna go ahead and add another one so we can see in our invoice format view. I'm gonna add another time entry here. Uh, I'll just do second time entry for demo and we'll do 1.5 hours. <clears throat> and now I should have two time entries when I create that invoice. Now let's go back and look at what we've got here. So if I look at the actual hours on this project, you'll notice that everything so far has been put on an invoice and it's been billed. You can see the posted sales invoice number out here, which you can drill down into, just go ahead and click on it. And then you'll see these two time entries that um, have not been billed yet. So in order to go ahead and build these, uh, I've got a setup that makes me approve them. So I'll just go do that real quick. And then we can see that this will flow through into um, our setup here. Now, before I do that, there are some setup options that we need to take a look at that are down here. Now, in the scheduling billing section, we talk about this in depth in section one. So feel free to check that out. But just as a quick reminder, the general business posting group will override what you have at your customer. If you need different GL accounts to be hit when you post the uh, invoice that's about to be created, the time billing option, we've got five different options here. So we've got three summary options and two detail options. The detail options are just gonna put all the details directly onto the uh, invoice format itself. So you can either group those by person or by task. We're gonna show you group by task today. Then the summary options are just gonna give the full hours for the invoice and then summary only isn't gonna attach anything. Summary with master timesheet or employee timesheet is gonna attach those timesheets to the actual invoice in addition to that invoice PDF. Um, if you do any of these summaries, by the way, you do need a default resource number here. What that's gonna do is it's gonna drive the GL accounts that are being hit there, mainly revenue. Um, if we have the details here, it's just gonna pull off of the resource on the line. So no need to add the default resource, but if you do summary, make sure you add that default resource number in down here. Next is gonna be the billing rate options. Right now we've got project only, so it's gonna bill everything at 195. The other options you have here are project with resource override and resource only. So resource only is gonna pull directly from this team members up top. You can see that I've got a bill rate of 200, Matt's got a bill rate of 225, and this contractor's got a bill rate of zero. So if we're doing project only, we'd wanna update this because it would literally bring in 200, 225, and zero. However, if we did project with resource override, it would take anybody who has a resource rate and use that as their rate. And then anybody that doesn't like that contractor, uh, it would just take this 195. So for our sake today, we're just gonna do project only. Everything's gonna get billed at 195 in this project. Now with that, we are ready to go ahead and approve this time and then get it on an invoice. So let's go to timesheet. I think I've probably got to actually submit mine first. So let's go do that. So let's go back to the home page. I've got like a little dashboard here that I've got all my time entries. So I'm gonna to go to time six. I'm gonna submit this. Just got my two time entries there that we looked at before, totaling four hours. And then I'm the approver on mine as well. So we'll go ahead here, time sheets to approve. I'm just gonna approve this real quick. And now that it's been sent and approved, I can go ahead and add this to an invoice. Now there's two ways to add this time to an invoice. I can come into the project itself that we were in before and I can just click create invoice and that will create the invoice directly off this project. If you had a project manager, somebody who just needed to get it out quick. Um, if you're more of an administrator though, you can come up here into time journal administration and what time journal administration is going to do is it's going to give you every time entry that's in your system and you can bill it all at once here for multiple projects. So it's, it'll obviously create different invoices for the different projects. But if I just go create invoices up here at the top and click yes, what this is gonna do is it's gonna create all the invoices for all the time that you had out there. So this is the project that we're working on. It created two invoices, that's fantastic. And now you'll see 2.5 and 1.5, which are those time entries that we just did. Um, I've got two different lines because we have AR discovery and AP discovery, which were those different um, phases or, or different tasks that we were working on here, which is how I have it being grouped. Then you can also see the details under here. So I've got my descriptions, testing for video, Ben, 2.5 hours on 718. Second time entry, Ben, 718, 1.5 hours. So it's putting everything that you need in here. Um, this isn't for the, the project management, but I know it's gonna give me an error if I don't tag that because it was required. And now you should be good to go. So if I look down here, I've got my project automatically tagged because it came from those time entries. If I come over here, I've got the project tagged. Uh, just for fun, I'm gonna do 
my cell phone here because I had the time and then now we should be good. So everything here is good to go. We can go ahead and post this. You'll also notice that our customer code came in. Uh, that's just because we're using customer snow and ice removers and I've got auto create dimensions turned on. Um, if you're not using auto create dimensions and you'd like to feel free to reach out to us. It's another great app that we've got that plays really well with project management. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and post these. And as soon as this posts, I can go back into my project. Uh, well, the first thing, if you go back to the time admin journals, you'll see that it's all added to the posted invoices and you can click on any of these to jump right into that posted invoice. And also now if I go back to my project, I can see that I've got 12.5 hours here. Um, I can click on this. It will show me all the time entries, show me that they've all been billed, uh, what invoice they're on and all that good stuff. Um, and I can drill into that anywhere. So the more narrow um, I get, the, the more it'll be filtered. So if you just wanted to see the time entries that were associated with this, phase or this task, you can click directly into those. If you want to see the time that's been associated with everything, just come down here to the bottom, click this 12.5 and it's going to show you every time entry that's on this project, when it was billed, what the status is, um, and then what the posted sales invoice number is um, that you're looking at here. If I click on any of these, it'll actually open up that invoice for you so that you can quickly and easily see all that. So obviously one of the big, um, the big benefits of using a tool like this is it's all embedded and ingrained in Business Central. You don't need to go to multiple places to manage projects, manage time, see the time. It's all in one spot. You can go to the project, you can see the time that was billed, and then even go all the way back to the invoice um, that it was billed on, or if it hasn't been billed yet, maybe what invoice um, it currently sits on that's unposted. So with that, that is the overview of kind of the sales side of things. Um, one more thing that we'll show before jumping into the purchasing side is our change order function. So what this change order function is going to do, if I come to a sales order, let's go ahead here, let's create a brand new one. I'm going to pick the same customer. And now what this is going to do is let's add that 1017 again. Get our pop-up note, let's go in Dallas, let's go one. And that's set, right? So I'm going to go ahead and release it. And what you'll notice is when it was released, it created an archived version. Now this archived version is gonna come in handy when we look at our change order report. So now if I say, hey, customer called back, they actually need me to add something. I'm gonna reopen this and I'm gonna go item 1018 maybe and 1024. And I'm gonna do Dallas, do one of these. Dallas, do five of these. All right, and this MacBook is gonna be $1,000 and these parts are gonna be 10 bucks a piece. So now the cool thing is, okay, now we're, now we're good to release it, release it, people get their notifications, all that fun stuff. You can see the notifications being tracked in here with advanced notifications as well. But now we've got two archive versions right now. What do these archive versions help us do? They help us see what's changed between versions. So if I come up top and go to process, I can actually print this change order and send it to anybody that I want, right? Internally or out uh, externally to the customer. Now, what this is gonna show is that in addition to that original sales order they had, they've now added uh, different lines to this order. So the change order report here helps on a transaction by transaction level, see exactly what's been added or removed. I could have deleted lines as well and it would have said removed or deleted is the change type uh, with the items that have been deleted. But now we can very accurately and clearly see here that these two items were added um, outside of our uh, original uh, transaction that was posted. So some cool stuff there uh, in order to track changes. Um, not only do we have that report there that's built into um, our tool for project management, we also have this change log down here, which is part of history and statistics. Uh, definitely recommend checking that out if you haven't. Uh, it allows you to track the change logs in a more easy fashion, um, and it would show you all the details that have changed here. Only caveat is you have to still use the out-of-box setup in order to turn stuff on. Then once it's turned on, it'll show up in that change log down there. So a lot of good stuff around change logs, both from project management, as we just saw, with printing that report out, as well as using history and statistics to um, check those change logs out. So let's go back and let's go into our project and flip over to the purchasing side. <clears throat> so I'm gonna come here. Instead of sales, I'm gonna go over to this purchasing documents tab. 
And what the purchasing documents tab is going to show is it's going to show everything that's on a purchasing uh, document. We've got quotes, we've got orders, returns, credit memos, invoices. Um, I'm going to hyper focus on the return or on the uh, orders today. And if I go into any of these orders, I can click view document. And again, um, not going to spend a ton of time going over the um, kind of fine-tuned details since we kind of visited them all on the sales side and they work exactly the same on the purchasing side. So if I come out here, I've already got the project code tagged. Uh, I've already got the project tagged here. And again, what that's going to allow us to do just like on sales is create literally any purchase order you want in the system and have the ability to tag it to a project. That way you can kind of start to track the expenses at a project level and link those purchase orders directly to that project without needing to do anything else. Again, the big key there um, as opposed to using jobs is that all we're really doing is using a dimension here in order to link and create automatically that dimension when the project's made and then be able to use that dimension anywhere in the system uh, in order to link revenue and expenses and get those back onto the project for kind of a one-stop shop view. So that's that here. Um, let's say I'm ordering these parts and pieces though for a project and I know I don't have any of these in stock, right? So what I can do is I can close this, go back to the project, and I can look at my item planner. Now, what does this item planner do? This shows everything that I need for this um, project. So it's taking all the sales orders that I have and all the inventory that I have on those sales orders and telling me, do I have it or not? Like I said, I know I don't have these parts and pieces. Uh, you can see it right here um, on these sales documents for the demand that I have. Um, but what you can see is that I do have uh, some supply documents here, um, which is indicating that I may have some uh, purchase orders already created uh, that we're waiting for those to come in. And once those uh, are on there, I can actually send these vendor follow-up emails. So what these vendor follow-up emails are going to do from the item planner standpoint is send a notification out to my vendor saying, hey, where where is this? Where's my stuff? You know, we've got this purchase order. Uh, these are the receipt dates and all that kind of stuff that you can see here and it will actually send them an email automatically. So I can click yes. Um, you can skip this, uh, go to the setup, go to the project management setup if you wanna skip this piece. Um, I've got it turned on just to show you what it'll look like today, uh, but it's just gonna send from me uh, to the vendor in this case, and then it's gonna say, where's my stuff, right? It's gonna put the vendor name in here. Hey, we've got some wild cards um, and then the uh, PO number here. So you can also add that to the body, who the vendor is, what the PO is, um, what the amount was, and then it will attach a copy of the uh, purchase order document there. So I'm just going to go ahead and send that. And now the vendor will get, well, in this case, I'm the vendor in my test, but the vendor will get this email. So it'll have the purchase order. It'll have, you know, this notice is from us regarding this purchase order number, details of the purchase order. You're the vendor. This is the PO number. Uh, this is the amount. If I had a purchaser, purchaser email, I would put that in there as well. But again, just another way to manage workflow when it comes to purchasing documents and really create kind of that unified um, cycle of sales and purchasing, right? We've got a bunch of sales orders on this project. Uh, we need stuff for those sales orders and we don't have some of that stuff in stock. So we've got purchase orders out there, but the purchase orders have not come in yet. Those lines are being indicated as red and I can send the vendor follow-up emails uh, in order to make sure that those vendors get us our stuff on a um, timely manner. Now, I can also view the document. So view document will show me the sales order. Uh, view supply document. <clears throat> if I click here, it will show me the purchase order. And again, trying to make this as easy as possible to go through end to end everything you need from a sales and a purchasing perspective. So with that, um, that is it for our working documents in sales and purchasing. Um, we'll, we will have some follow-up videos that uh, take a look more in depth at contractor billing and contractor expenses, as well as employee expenses, project billing, and even a continua add-in if you're using expense management in order to bill back uh, expenses to your uh, clients. And then finally, we're going to have a video on resource planning, reporting, dashboarding, and analysis. So that's going to look at more of the posted transactions that we didn't talk about today. Everything we talked about today was kind of in that sales document, purchase document, and item planner, which is all working documents to make sure that what you need for your project um, is getting uh, consumed and then also getting sent out to your customers. And like I said, in those future sessions, we'll dive deeper into 
some of the accounting, the financials, and the reporting. So hope that you enjoyed the video today. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. And if you thought this video was useful, uh, please feel free to subscribe to get a first look at anything we publish in the future. Uh, we're always adding new content, so really appreciate everybody who takes a look at it and takes it as a learning opportunity to improve their Business Central instance. So thanks again for everybody watching, and we will talk to you soon.